just moments ago, CNN's teams on the ground near the Israel-Gaza border. They had to take cover, yeah. jump in a ditch yeah. because of what was happening overhead. I'm going to show you these, these moments. Listen to this. Get down. Go. Go. Closer. Get down. Close, close, close. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. You're okay. You're all right. You're all right. Okay. That's the iron dome. Okay. That's the iron dome. Yeah. Fine. Clarissa is on the ground right now. Clarissa, tell us what's happening. Stand by. Hi, John. So forgive me. I have a slightly an unelegant position, but we have just had a massive barrage of rockets coming in here, uh, not too far from us. So we have had to take shelter here by the roadside. We're just about five minutes away. Gaza is in that direction. We can hear now a lot of jets uh, in the sky. We could also hear the Iron Dome intercepting uh, a number of those rockets as they were whizzing overhead and making impact in that direction, uh, not too far from here. We came to this location because this was ground zero uh, for this entire operation of carnage. Hamas militants came uh, on a pickup truck. This was the first place where they breached that border wall, and they basically drove down this strip, just spraying uh, lead wherever they went. We saw, in fact, I was just grabbing it before that happened, and we had to hit the deck, but uh, heavy weaponry being used. It's saying we can get up now. Um, where are we moving to? Sorry, just so one second, guys. Okay. Just come up and go this way and then All right, so now I can go. show you uh, the scene here. This is where those militants first came, opening up fire on all these vehicles. Uh, there's a baby carriage down there turned over on its side. You can see over there, Clayton, if you just show in the distance there, some kind of strikes, looks like in Gaza as well. Uh, return fire. Or is that the smoke from the rocket launches? Forgive me. Um, it's a little difficult after being crouched in a ditch to know exactly what's been going on. But yes, multiple casualties along this area. You can probably see the scale of the damage that was done to these vehicles. A lot of them just blew up with the force of the ammunition they were taking. And they're just now towing away the actual pickup truck that was carrying those Hamas fighters uh, and met with some resistance. The, careful, Clayton. There were a couple of uh, bullet holes in the window shield, in the windshield, rather. So they stopped the car, they got out of it, and they just went on this shooting spree. This is also, they believe, where a lot of hostages were taken. They just got out of this, started grabbing people started shooting people and taking them back to that side of the border. We're going to get over to Nick Robertson, but first, John is over at the Magic Wall to show where we're talking about, where Nick Robertson is. This is the scene of the music festival, that music festival massacre. If the control room can show John at the Magic Wall so we can show them. So, John, he's in Ream. Yeah, That's this, where... is, this is where Nick Robertson is right here. This is where the music festival was. Clarissa, by the way, we're not giving the exact location up in this area right here, but... This is where Nick Robertson is at the site of the music festival, Kate. Exactly. All right, let's get to Nick Robertson now. Nick, talk to us about what you see there and also just more and more horrific stories that are coming out of that massacre. That, that, there's a lot that we can see from here. Very quickly, Gaza's just over there. A few miles away, you can see the smoke rising. We're seeing multiple impacts over there in Gaza. But I'm going to ask John to spin the camera around now on these vehicles uh, here. There's a situation about to develop here. Now, the people here pulling, pulling the bags from the vehicles are volunteers getting the identification documents of all those young party goers who were, who were at the party. They were, they were, this is where they were shot up. All these vehicles were shot up. The soldiers here uh, come over to make sure that these people have authority to do what they're doing literally smashing the windows here. I mean, this is unfolding ar around us here right now. But these people, they, no, it's OK. It's OK. 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 OK
We're explaining. Okay, no, thank you. No, don't talk to me like this. It's not, you, see, you can see the man like this. What is it? They're, they're collecting the documents. It's okay. Thank you. Not about we, collecting. No. Why? Yeah. What's the window? What's the reason? The, well, this is up to him, not me. I'm, I'm not involved in that. So this is an unfolding situation as, as we talked about there. Passions, as you can see, are really high and, and with really good reason because this is where those young people had parked their vehicles for that party on Friday night, Saturday morning. And this is where they rushed back to when Hamas raced in here to start killing them. And this is where they were shot up. And you can see car after car after car after car here. We see their bags being taken out, but we've seen documents lying at the side of the road. It's confusing and active situation. There are soldiers here. There are angry and upset civilians. There are volunteers taking the documents away. But look up here more and more of these vehicles. And it just really gives you that sense and understanding of, of, of the horror, the horror of the moment when in the early hours of the morning, suddenly the party goers found themselves being attacked by Hamas, brutally murdering them. We've listened to testimony of doctors who've treated some of the wounded and the, and the dying. And they were trying to escape. They were trying to get, a, they were trying to get away. It's hard to, it's hard to overstate the, the, the horror of what was happening here, but you only have to look at the way the vehicles are parked, the way that you can see people are trying to throw themselves in to drive away here in desperation and just cut down. And the, and the situation unfolds further down the road here, more shot up and destroyed vehicles as more of the party goes were trying to leave. But I can tell you the situation here is very dynamic. It's very fluid. It is changing. As we've been driving in here just to get to this spot, we passed an area where Hamas fighters, terrorists were shot and killed by Israeli defense forces. Their vehicles are lying at the side of the road. Their bodies are still lying at the side of the road. And we've also seen the biggest deployment that we've witnessed so far of Israeli military defense forces with tanks, howitzers, armored personnel carriers deployed out in the field, dozens and dozens of them. That's the biggest deployment that we've seen so far. And while we were driving down here, we've seen a lot more uh, reinforcements on their way. So this is an area that's getting, that's having increasingly more and more troops put in here, very close to Gaza, as we're talking about over here. Uh, and again, that's the impact of, of airstrikes there on, on, on Gaza, and they're ongoing. We hear the fighter jets in the skies above us, and then you'll see a plume of smoke rise up from over there. And the reason that these people are rushing in to take away the possessions of all those who were, 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 were killed, injured, during the, during the Hamas killing spree, they're rushing in and they're doing this at high speed because they're very concerned about the security situation here. And what they're trying to do is to bring information and relief to some of those families who have no knowledge of what happened to their loved ones. But you've just witnessed what it's like here at the moment. There, there are, there's multiple things going on and tensions are high, concerns are high. Uh, most of the civilian population has been evacuated from around here.